order. I'd like to welcome everyone. If you would please stand for the pledge of, to the flag. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Superintendent Fury, we're going to start with special recognition. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, tonight we are recognizing one of our schools for a very special accomplishment. I'd like to ask Livingston Elementary School Principal uh, Mrs. Sherry Thomas and school nurse Ms. Martha Arnold to come forward at this time. It is through their efforts that Livingston Elementary School has become a certified heart safe school. Mrs. Thomas and Mrs. Arnold facilitated the implementation of this very important school-wide program which could one day help save the life of a student or even an employee. Pediatric sudden cardiac arrest happens without warning. The sudden loss of heart function affects 600 to 1,000 children and adolescents and 350,000 adults every year in the United States. In the past five years, at least 15 students and 12 adults have died from probable sudden cardiac arrest in Georgia schools. Fortunately, since December 2011, there have been 36 saves in Georgia, 36 people, 13 students and 23 adults who are alive today because their school personnel were trained and have practiced their medical emergency response. Project SAVE, Sudden Cardiac Death Awareness Vision for Prevention and Education was created to educate school systems, sudden, uh, school systems about sudden cardiac death, making them aware of the incidents and the need for a timely response. Schools that complete the checklist for Project SAVE indicating that their school has a quality automated external defibrillator, an AED, implementation program in place to prevent sudden cardiac death are recognized by Children's Healthcare of Atlanta as heart safe schools. Heart safe schools also participate in important statewide and national research about prevention of sudden cardiac death by completing a confidential incident report. The report is sent to Project SAVE staff whenever the an e, AED is used in an emergency. Upon completion of the incident report, Project SAVE replaces or provides reimbursement to the school for the electrode pads on the AED. It is our goal to have every school in our district certified as a heart safe school. Congratulations to Livingston Elementary School for earning this very important certification. Thank you both very much for your hard work and effort. We appreciate you. Madam Chair, that is all the special recognition this evening. Okay. Do we have any public participation? We do. <coughs> public participation is the time that the board has set aside to encourage you as members of our community to voice your opinion on any matter, either included on or excluded from the printed agenda. A maximum time of five minutes will be allotted to a single individual or a single topic based on the number of requests. Complaints against any employee of the school system will not be heard unless the complaint has been submitted in writing to the superintendent at least seven days prior to the board meeting. If unresolved, any personal complaints, per, excuse me, personal complaints about school personnel must be put in writing for the board to review for the executive session. Personal attacks against any member of the board will not be tolerated. Once the time for public participation has passed, discussion of topics will be restricted to board members only. Thank you in advance for complying with the, this request. We have two. Okay. Ms. Sharon Lord, we have a microphone right over here for you, Ms. Lord. Good evening. Good evening. I was told it was 10 minutes. When, when did it change to five? It's been five minutes for a while. Okay, well, I was gonna set for 10. Um, I'll have to talk extra fast. Um, my daughter, Solange Lord, is a graduating senior at Eastside. And unfortunately though, at the moment, she's not slated to walk because she did not pass the English graduation test. Um, I went and reviewed what's necessary. And you all know this, but maybe there are people in the audience that don't. Graduation requirements include passing all classes. She did. Achieving the Carnegie units, she did. Take the ELCTs and all of the other standardized tests, she did. Take the five Georgia graduation tests and pass with 200 points or better, 
and indicating in case those that may not know, this is the phase out year, this is the last group that's required. I'm gonna change the five to a four. She did pass four of the five, but not the fifth one. She's a senior in good standing and an all around great team and deserving student. So I'm here, I've looked uh, in your bios and I don't, I, you know who you are, so I don't have to tell you, but I was interested to find out that I share Emory as an alum with two of you. I didn't know that. I also saw that some of you included that you are fair and equitable. You included your interest in all students achieving. <clears throat> and certainly, as a Board of Education, under the State Board of Education, you certainly uphold making education work for all Georgians. And that's simply what I'm asking for. I was told uh, recently that you have a 30-day review window. Well, it would be a mute point in 30 days. It's going to be phased out this summer. So really, What's the significance of walking? It is sentimental, certainly for me as a single parent who has worked with this child tirelessly, that I would like 30 seconds to see her cross the stage like every other parent. And I really think to hold to the fact that, you know, we have to follow 30 days, not uh, barring the fact that it is being phased out, I think is, a bit misguided. What are some possible solutions? Allow the student to be a part of the line. If you can't or won't give their home diploma, then so be it. Let them walk, because in reality, she would have already graduated at 11 a.m. So there's nothing you're giving her. It's simply the ceremonial walk. It serves no purpose again. This is a singular moment that will not come again. Do not create obstacles where it is unnecessary. Each of you have children and some have grandchildren. Put yourself here and put me there. And what would you want me to say to you? Again, the motto of our state is making education work for all Georgians. So I ask, where is the demonstration of this? Is this a tagline, or is this what we really believe? Here is a tangible way you can aid that mission. And my last point to you is a reflective one. Are you doing what you believe in, or are you settling for what you are doing? I also brought her transcript in case she wanted to see that she has satisfied all the requirements necessary for graduation, along with letters of recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Lord, Thanks. so much. We appreciate you expressing your concerns. Yeah. And Ms. Lord, how we typically respond to public participants is that we get back with you. Um, so certainly we will respond and take what you said in consideration. I'm sorry, that was my timer for your five minutes. <laughs> We are limited. Since this is a situation we already uh, were pretty, we all pretty much knew about. I think we probably will have like a decision um, by tonight or tomorrow. The email that you sent us—that's your best point of contact. Okay. The next public participant is Ron. I don't want to mispronounce your name, Swan. Okay.
Thank you for uh, allowing me to address you this evening. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. One of mine was already answered. Um, and that is, this, my little girl is in the STEM program. This is the first year for the STEM program. And um, one of the questions I have is, is the STEM program on track to be certified before they graduate? And if not, what difference, uh, how would that affect her getting into college? And the second thing is, um, is there going to be a new director for STEM chosen pretty soon? And if so, will they uh, be involved in both teaching and directing? To not be so overwhelmed, maybe, is my question. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm still writing your questions. I'm sorry. Okay. If not. Okay, and the other one was regarding the director of the STEM program. Would they be teaching and being over the program? Okay. Directing. Seemed like a big, a big responsibility. So, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that falls under NCCA or if that falls under the school board, the decisions that they make for that. So I'm not sure if I'm addressing the right people tonight or not. So. Now, I didn't put an email address on there. You so. have it. I see but you I have your phone a, number. You I have an email? A, I do. Okay. You want to come write it? Sure. I didn't know if you want everybody in the audience emailing you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, that completes public participation for tonight. Can I ask a question about this comment? Can I do that now? Can we? Because uh, I, I wonder if, I don't want to get out of line, but. Can it be done in other matters? It might can, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Because it, it might, it's a question for Sam that might be able to answer. Okay, if you don't mind doing it in other matters That's at the fine. end. Okay. All right, can I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been motioned by Mr. Metter, second by Ms. Coggin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Turner, second by Mr. Metter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, superintendent's report, operations, Dr. Lockhart. Yes, Madam Chair, for the financial report and the operations report, there are no changes. Okay, no changes to either. I have a motion to approve the operations report. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Coggins, second by Mr. Metters. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Curricular and instructional program. Uh, the curriculum instruction and technology report and enrollment report there are no changes however we do have a presentation for you and at this time I ask for Darren Berry to come forward to introduce our presenters okay perfect madam chair superintendent and board members in the fall of 2012 the Newton County School System entered a into a partnership with Newton Medical Center and Georgia Orthopedics and Sport Med Sports Medicine this partnership allowed us to assign full-time athletic trainers to each of our high schools. Uh, they've also provided support to our middle schools in areas of uh, concussion return to play and uh, heat, um, heat index and um, helping the, the, the coaches um, with some trainings. Last spring, Dr. Renee Riley of Georgia Orthopedics and Sport Medicine asked me to meet, meet with her and the athletic trainers to discuss a new program for uh, or an improvement in our Newton County return to play uh, procedures related to concussions. Uh, shortly thereafter, Dr. Ryan Tomlins was brought on board with Georgia Orthopedics and has spearheaded an effort to improve concussion symptom tracking and return to play. Dr. Tomlins is here tonight uh, along with several other representatives from Newton Medical and um, uh, he may want to introduce them. I'll let him do that if he wants to. Um, and he's going to present to us some general information about our athletic trainer program as well as uh, concussions and our plans to implement a widely accepted uh, measure for determining student athletes return to activity after concussion has been diagnosed. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to thank the board and the superintendent for allowing me to present tonight. 
And I just want to take a quick second to introduce myself to the audience. Um, Dr. Ryan Tomlins, Georgia Orthopedic Sports Medicine, and also just give you a quick background. Some of you may be asking the question, why is this orthopedic doctor here talking about concussions? So I'm a primary care sports medicine physician, so I have done my residency in family medicine in Greenville, South Carolina, and then did additional training uh, as a fellow at the Andrews Institute in Birmingham, Alabama, where we do solely orthopedics. And as part of that, primary care is under our umbrella with concussion being a very large part of that. So with that, uh, I've got the clicker here. All right, there you go. All right. So this is an outline of the topics I'll be covering tonight. So as most of us in the room know, as recent lawsuits, most notably in the NFL, increased media coverage both nationally and locally, uh, concussions have been uh, become a heightened public awareness. And more so than ever, the appropriate recognition and proper management of those injuries, not only when they first occur, but also in the continued treatments, and even probably even more so the return to play decisions are a very important part of uh, student athletes' participation these days. As Darren mentioned, prior to me arriving, uh, Newton um, <clears throat> County schools along with Newton Medical Center, Georgia Orthopedics had already put into place full-time athletic trainers in all of our public schools here in Newton County. So a big step in that concussion management. Now currently our athletic trainer program, which was started in 2012, provides full-time certified athletic trainers to all three of our public schools here in Newton County. The coverage for both junior varsity and, and mostly varsity events, as you can see listed here, and this is on a yearly basis, include 60 plus football and soccer games, 70 plus baseball and basketball games, wrestling amongst many other sports. Too many hours to count as far as practice coverage. We just stopped at hundreds. These ATCs, in addition to the coverage they pr uh, provide, are also able to conduct both on the field and off the field evaluations. Does that student athlete need further evaluation or is it just a sprain that they can continue to play on? They also save hundreds of thousands of dollars each year for both parents in overseeing some basic rehabilitation exercises. As we all know, copays are on the rise physical therapy visits, so this is a big part of what they do as well. This past weekend, we wrapped up, wrapped up our mass physical event at Newton High School, where the athletic trainers were a huge, huge part of this. We couldn't do it without them. We saw roughly 225 student athletes from Newton County, and this was done at a reduced cost, $20, with the important part of that is half of that goes back into the schools to help provide supplies for the trainers such as taping, pre-wrap, Gatorade, those kind of things. So what's, what's the current policy? Well, we know in 2013, Governor Deal signed the Return to Play Act, which is now in law. And this is a summary of that law. So every participant and their parents must be provided some sort of information about the nature of the risk that these, these uh, student athletes are about to engage in with regard to concussion and head injury. Any athlete that's exhibiting signs and symptoms of concussion must be evaluated by a healthcare provider. And that only goes for the student athlete, but also if they see anyone exhibiting similar symptoms, such as a teammate. And if that athlete is deemed to have a concussion, they shall not be permitted to return to play until they can receive clearance from an appropriate healthcare provider. So what are we proposing? How can we help make the current policy better? So that's part of our goal here tonight. So following the diagnosis on or off the field, these student athletes, we'd prefer to be seen by a physician. Now that might be a MD or a DO, preferably someone that has several uh, <coughs> years or several cases of experience with concussion management. 
And if that's not available, either a licensed nurse practitioner or a physician assistant that also has ample experience that in, in, uh, in all hopes working underneath that physician. And then also an athletic trainer can be there on the front lines as well. That's kind of the order of hierarchy that we would prefer to have these people um, assessed. So no athlete is allowed to return to the game or practice on the same day that a concussion has been diagnosed or cannot be ruled out. So there's several times that signs and symptoms of a concussion are very vague. And if we're not sure, we'd recommend that these kids be evaluated by the appropriate medical professional <coughs> rather than being, being able to return to play. And any athlete that is diagnosed shall be medically cleared by the appropriate professional. And we would recommend a graduated return to play protocol after their symptoms have resolved. So this is the protocol that we use at Georgia Orthopedics and Sports Medicine that was developed as part of the American Medical Sports uh, Society as well as the Zurich guidelines. And as you see as step number one, we don't do anything until that student athlete is 100% symptomatic. I tell our patients all the time as well as the parents, sometimes the hardest thing to do in medicine is nothing and we prefer to do nothing until 100% of symptoms have been resolved. And then at that point, it's a graduated day-by-day -day process where we start simple, where the first day is to increase the heart rate, doing something as simple as ride a bike. And then we're gonna add some sports-specific activity. And preferably, we would like to have each participant participate in a full practice. And for football, that's a full contact practice, baseball, basketball, whatever the case may be full practice. And at each one of these levels, the student athlete should remain asymptomatic, meaning no return of their prior symptoms, no additional symptoms of concern. So what about rest time? Well, most of these kids are going to require both mental and physical rest. And I can tell you, based off of my experience, most kids require about three to four days of missing school. That's always a question that comes up. The stimulation of the lights, the sounds, the studying, the concentrating is just a little bit too much for them to handle in those first few days. Now some kids might be a little sooner, some might be a little bit later, but on average that's what I've seen to be true. And as far as the amount of time that it takes to recover on average, I would say somewhere between seven to 10 days. So if you put the seven to 10 days along with the five days of rehab, we're looking at closer to two weeks. So I'm honest with the kids when they come in, if they come in on a Friday night, the next Friday night's game for football, not going to happen. It's just not worth it. So most of these kids are going to recover without complications. For those who don't, we have a couple cutting edge technologies available to us that we would like to implement and use at, if needed. One being a new MRI machine that was just placed this past January, and the other being neurocognitive testing. Now I want to make just a quick comment about the CT that you see up there. I can tell you that a significant amount of people um, and student athletes do not need CAT scans for concussion. And unfortunately, we go to the ER and this is an education thing that we're still working on. So a head CT is equivalent to 500 chest x-rays. Now it's always up to that physician to determine if that's appropriate and that'll always be the case. But 90 to 95 plus percent of time, it's not needed unless neurologic deficits are in place. And those are the kind of things that I'm looking for that may be different from a trainer who's trying to diagnose uh, the concussion. So we would like every coach to participate in a free online course on concussion management, going through this process, diagnosis, what's the normal return to play? What can you expect from your athlete? How fast they can get back on the field or court or gym or mat? And we'd like each school to be responsible for monitoring the participation of their coaches with this program. And that all athletes in high risk sports complete a baseline impact test prior to the start of the uh, academic school year. So a little bit more detail about the impact computerized test. So impact is short for immediate post concussion assessment and cognitive testing. This is a computerized version of the test versus paper or standardized, which tends to be a little bit more at length, but often 
uh, has to be interpreted by a neuropsychologist. It's that detail, way over my head for sure. And this is a, a very important part uh, of, an, of a concussion protocol, but it's, it's just that, it's a part of a protocol. This is not the end all be all. We don't make a decision based off this alone. It's just part of it. Prior to the uh, start of the school year, we will baseline the high risk sports, which we have determined based off the number of concussion associated sports and experience in seeing these kids, and they're listed here for you. It's not that they won't happen in other sports, but to get baseline testing and funding, we'd have a hard time saying you need to screen 25 golfers or something along those lines. Now the baseline testing, very important. We need the best baseline we can get for each student athlete when they're at their baseline. If, if somebody has some difficulty with reaction time, we can pick that up. We know that that's not a concussion related problem. That's just who they are, or maybe they're a little deficient in that area. So that's why it's so important to get a good baseline. Internet best based test takes approximately 25 minutes, can be administered by a host of different folks. The interpretation is different. We'd like, to be inter we'd like for it to be interpreted by a physician, but if not, and this is on the IMPACT website as well, they would prefer a licensed nurse practitioner and or physician assistant to be second in line. And that's what they're trying to keep it as, and we, we agree with that. Baseline testing recommended every two years. So what about numbers? We're talking about cost. Well, these are the current cost and numbers for IMPACT. And I can tell you that most of the time for your cost, you're looking at the number of baseline tests. Nowhere will we ever be near 100, 200, po at least I hope not. <laughs> if, if that's the problem, we've got a whole other issue going on. And in the world of disclaimers, Georgia Orthopedics Newton Medical Center has nothing to gain from impact. This is simply a tool to use at our discretion that we feel like we need for some more information to get these kids back safe and appropriate. So based off this current school year, these are the numbers from the three public schools. Roughly 950 student athletes. So at 500 baseline tests, you need roughly 1,000 to cover that. We're looking at $1,600. That's what we're asking you to consider to help us cover for the student athletes in Newton County. So what are the benefits of the concussion management program? Well, we feel like we have a comprehensive team of medical professionals to help in treating, diagnosing, and return to play decisions. We have state-of-the-art state technology to help assist in detection and treatment. And the main goal, the main reason that I do this and that I hope the rest of us do it is to get our student athletes back on the field as quickly but as safely as possible. Parents always ask me, is my child gonna be okay after a concussion? With these things, we can help reassure that even though your child has had a concussion, there's not gonna be any permanent damage. They're gonna be just fine. They're gonna progress normally. They're gonna develop into a, a fine young man or woman. And we would be one of the few counties in Georgia that has full-time athletic trainers in all public schools, as well as a comprehensive concussion program. I just got an email returned today from one of the board members of Georgia Ath uh, High School Athletic Association. 34% of the high schools, this is self-reported, have athletic trainers in the schools. Of that 34%, 10% of those are full-time. The rest are part-time or, or anything else, so 10% full-time do the math that's that's pretty low so what about our benefit what do we feel like we're adding to the current policy well we feel like we are better defining what a health care provider is and help uh, assist with appropriate referrals to maximize treatment education for coaches students and parents implementing the graduated return to play uh, procedures neurocognitive testing individual school concussion action plans assisted by our athletic trainers that are already in place, and also improved data records for concussion management to get better every year as far as treating these, looking at the numbers, and trying to improve each year. <coughs> what about down the road vision? We'd like to implement this at the start of the next school year for all public high schools, and we'd like to continue to develop 
the same program for our middle schools in the upcoming year. And we can also reach out to those additional educators at the middle school and at additional levels, such as physical education teachers, coaches, and et cetera. And with that, uh, I'll take any questions or comments you might have. <coughs> yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. You mentioned about student athletes. Yeah. That would be covered under this program. What if you had a student who was not an athlete who may have slipped and fallen going up the steps and there was a concussion there? Yeah. Would they fall under that coverage? They would fall under the same coverage. The only difference between that person is that they wouldn't have a baseline impact score if we needed it. Uh, I would have to say at least 90 to 95 percent of the student athletes for concussion don't need the impact. Now where that falls into and where I use it is if that kid or that student athlete, excuse me, comes to me two days later and says, all my symptoms are gone, can I play this Friday? Well, that's not in line with what I'm used to seeing. <clears throat> or if the opposite is true, we're three, four weeks out and we're not following that same process, that's when I kind of incorporate, incorporate the impact and to help me make decisions. I guess the reason I ask that question is because it may be at uh, a point in that student's uh, process where they have not begun participating in a sport. Yeah. It may have happened right. a couple of weeks or a month prior to them actually joining the football team or basketball team. Sure. If, if, if they're not in the, I mean, we would run them through the same concussion protocol that we would for anyone else. And if they haven't gotten the impact, testing before you know we would either try to work them in or if they be, did become a student athlete or catch them the following year okay mr did i answer your question yeah <laughs> <Are> you <sure? laughs> i'm just I, I guess some of the responsibility would fall upon the the school to monitor those uh children in the event they decide to participate in an athletic program that they make uh whoever it is aware of the fact that they have had a concussion well, I can tell you the responsibility tends to fall back on me most of the time, <laughs> especially if I see them. And, and that's part of the job, you know, we understand that. But if they're certainly in a public school where our, our athletic trainers are at full time, you know, there are outreach, they can help us with that as well. So once these kids go back into the schools, our athletic trainers are following them through the process. So we would have that in place as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The only cost um, to us is the $1,600? Correct. Currently, because you said you wanted to look at adding. Mm -hmm. If, if we expanded to the middle schools, um, we would have to get an estimate on the numbers, but I believe it would be roughly twice that amount. Twi okay. Darren, well, is this an action item for tonight? No. Okay. It's, this is, um, we, you already have a concussion policy, board policy, so what we're asking is for your blessing to move forward with a, with a concussion protocol that defines processes and procedures on how we act with student athletes. With action June 3rd, is that what you? We, we, don't, we don't need action because it's just a, pol a practice, okay. it's not a policy. Okay. Okay. So you already have a policy in place that defines, that meets the letter of the law, right. but we wanted to put some, some structure around how we <coughs> respond. And so that's, that's what, what we're asking yeah. for your blessing. We, we, we right. wanna take the current policy and expand it right. and, and make it even better and more, I more comprehensive. I would like to have some numbers to uh, implement it in the uh, middle schools as well. Okay. Uh, my estimate is around the same, same amount of uh, participants in the middle school um, based on the numbers that I got previously for our helmet numbers, mm -hmm. um, looking at those, those types of numbers for participation across the sports and we also do a sports equity report every year that, that indicates what number of kids we have participate in each sport. So from my memory of those numbers, it's probably around 950 to 1,000 more kids, So, uh, which is why Dr. Tomlin said it'd be about twice the amount. So it'd be about another 1,600 for well, middle school. Just for the testing. Okay. Yeah, for the, for the impact test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. I think we're thinking the same thing. Ahead. So I guess my question is, <clears throat> if, if I'm in order to make a motion, to go in and accept it uh, with the stipulation of, of a minute or two at the middle school uh, in the process as well. 
Yeah, w what we'd like to do is is continue to to work that out. We yeah. currently don't have any trainers in the middle schools to provide the baseline testing, and we our recommendation would be to start with the high schools right. this year, and then add the middle schools the following year and rough out uh, work out the rough edges if if any this year with the high schools with the goal of starting in the middle school and high schools the following year. And the, the last, um, I think it was the last bullet on the last slide where, where Dr. Thomas talked about education for uh, the middle schools, that's part of moving towards that mm -hmm. is to help. And that would also address your question about the, the kid who just stumbles in the hall and, and receives right. a, a head injury. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna try to train these, the people at the middle schools that don't have these ladies, the, the trainers there, um, we're going to kind of pull on them to help train them to understand uh, how to to identify concussion symptoms and, and to follow this concussion protocol. We've also required, the Georgia High School Association requires all uh, coaches at, at high school level to take that online course that he mentioned and we in Newton County required all the middle school coaches to do the same thing last year. We're going to continue to require that. So that's a move in that direction. Okay. What so we have a motion. With a clarity, the sixteen hundred dollars. There's no approval. Or are you asking for that? It, well, it's just, it's under twenty twenty five thousand. Right. Right. So I did, you don't. You don't have oh, to okay. have, yeah. Okay. Okay. But I but, but I did want you to know um, <clears throat> where where what we're working on and and our and uh, recognize our partnership and also to remember that we've got the trainers who are at our high schools who are no cost to the system and that we are working closely with the with. Um, the doctor to put a process in place that really clearly articulates what, what the expectation is on the field, how they go back, and, and how we work them through that gradual return to play. So um, while we don't need a, a policy, I wanted you to be aware of the procedures right. that, that we were looking at it and, and making a move to be the front runner in, in this effort as opposed to waiting for everybody else to do something. Mm -hmm. So we had a motion on the floor. If nobody second, the motion is going to die. Second. If we need to do that, don't need a motion. We, we don't really need it. You don't need a motion. motion. Okay. Nope. I think you were just trying to make it clear that you were supportive. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes. Me also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I, I was looking for you. I'm like, where's Dr. Lockhart? <laughs> Did you have anything else up under item B? No, ma'am. No other items. Okay. I do need a motion for item B. I said move to pass, um, to approve item B. Okay. The curriculum and instruction. Curriculum okay. and instructional program. Do I have a second? Second. Sir. Aye. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We have no old business. New business, before we move forward, new business, Dr. Lockhart, are you going to present the entire new business? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So with that being said, since Dr. Lockhart is going to present the entire new business, mm -hmm. if no one has any discussion, I'd like to take all of these items with the exception of J together. No, I have some questions. Okay. All right. So let's do them individually. Okay. okay. Item A. Uh, no changes to the report, Madam Chair. Okay. Do I have a motion for item A, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Turner. Second by Mr. Johnson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Item B? An item B, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay. Have a motion for item B? So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Turner. Second by Ms. Coggin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item C? Item C, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay. Do I have a motion for item C? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Ms. Coggins, second by Mr. Metters. Discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Item D? Item D, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay. Do I have a motion for item D? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Ms. Coggins, second by Mr. Metters. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Item E. Item no E. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But item E. Item E. No changes, Madam Chair. Okay. Do I have a motion? I am on readiness. On, on, on the motion. I have a question. We um, need I, to move it to the floor in order to discuss second. it. 
Wait a minute. So what now? We have to move the item forward to open up for discussion. Mm -hmm. So it's been motioned by Mr. Turner, second by Mr. Meadows. Discussion. In the facility plan from last year, we had some funds in there, and I don't see how, <clears throat> last year $1.2 million in our five year plan. And I cannot find how those funds are being allocated uh, now, and mm -hmm. are they still there? And so, where are they, and when can we utilize those funds? Mr. Barr is going to come forward. <laughs> <laughs> One point two million in splost funds, or we had set aside on the construction of, of Newton County High School, uh, raising of the two buildings. Right. <clears throat> and I want to know where those funds are. Are they available to be used as originally planned? The budget, the splost budget, has been presented to you for the next fiscal year. And I believe that total is around $3 million. So at this point, it's not a budgeted item this year, but it could be later on as lost uh, revenues continue to come in. I, I don't understand. <clears throat> Listen to me carefully. We had set aside $1.2 million for the raising of the buildings. We did that contractually, I think, when we signed the contract, that money was set aside. <coughs> and we've discussed this before, that the money was there. And I'm trying to find out how do we get that money and apply it to the raising of Sharp and whatever portion I agreed upon in Newton High School. Right. And like I said, I was not involved in those conversations, Mr. Johnson. But what I can tell you is that that money, our SPLOST funds have been budgeted and presented to you as part of the uh, next fiscal year budget. And that's, that's the money that's available. So if the board would like to discuss redirecting those funds in some way, that's uh, up to you all. But what's been presented is based on our uh, recommendation of priorities moving forward in the next fiscal year. So From this, yeah. But contractually, <coughs> it was not part of the contract. I, I miss it when I say contractually. We set aside internally. <clears throat> From the last time we talked about it I j just for clarity for myself I um, I think I remember the item th that amount well I don't remember the specific amount but money being available if that's what we chose to do yes. however however it w how it was explained to us is that if we choose to tear down those buildings with those funds which are not a main priority right now we would not have funds available for existing schools should we need something to go at an existing school and so it may be wasting right you would have to minus the 1.2 million dollars from those priorities that have been presented to you yes for SPLOS projects well I just I just have to tell you I've been misled on this from two years ago when the previous superintendent prior to his departure emphatically and quoted that there are two million dollars in the budget to be used for raising sharp and if, and and and, and I'll go. <clears throat> it was no discussion. We are putting new words to something that we agreed to the previous board. We are adding new verbiage, and to a lack of negative term is <clears throat> to use the two, one point two million dollars. And it's we're rephrasing the situation now. And we're kicking the can down the street. Been doing it for about three or four years now. And, I, I, and I'm disappointed that I didn't speak up earlier because I was under the impression that <clears throat> because you and Ms. Fury asked that we delay any movement on the program and wait until this year. We did that. There was no intent, from my expectations, that we didn't utilize the funds for what they were set aside for initially. What we've Let tried me, to do, Mr. Johnson, is I think, identify. If I can add some clarity to this, uh, 
to my best recollection, what, is, what happened was that during the time that we had the discussion, those were funds that were available through SPLOS that at that particular time, that 1.2 could be used to uh, tear down buildings. And it was set aside if the board chose to do that. At that given time, we decided not to do it because of other projects that we had going on. Now, some of these things will change according to how the splash money comes in. So that can change. That was my understanding when we first talked about it back during that particular time when Mr. Johnson was speaking of the 1.2 million set aside. Yes, it was, but the board decided not to proceed at that time due to the building of new schools and we need to do that. That was my understanding of what we're supposed to be doing with, with those funds. What, what, what mine is, I must have turned it different. We set aside the funds when we decided the total cost of Newton High. Mm -hmm. And those funds were within the 1.2 there <clears throat> to raise sharp. I know of no meeting that any board had redirecting the purpose of those funds. I'm not, I have not participated in the redirecting of those funds. View path would be a redirection. He's, a, yeah. he's correct <clears throat> partially, but the fact is that the board never voted to use those funds for that purpose. There was discussion, but there was never a motion or a second and approval of those funds to be used in that manner. We did discuss it, and as Dr. Matthews mentioned to us, that the funds at that particular time were available. And if we chose to do so, they could be used for that purpose. The board never took any action to actually vote for those funds to be used for that purpose. The, the, sorry, the board, the board voted to set aside 1.2 for that purpose. No. No, we don't. No, we never voted. You weren't on the board when we I was about, Okay. Just for clarity, I just wanted to specify that we were not a part of that conversation. Well, I'm, I, well I'm, I know that. That's why I'm going back okay. and trying to prevent, if I may say, the new verbiage to explain why we're not utilizing the 1.2 to raise sharp and, and whatever portion we agree on new time. You, you can, I mean, there, there, you can use the, the SPLOS monies if you so choose. Now, we presented you with the prioritized budget that itemizes things that need to be done that have not been done to our existing facilities. For example, we need to replace HVAC. So if you would like to divert those funds and not replace an HVAC system at a school, then we can do that. Um, but the funds all are in the same pot of money. And so what I asked you at the beginning of the school year was if you would give me time to sit down with our team to look at all of the projects that are outstanding that have not been done that if we don't do will have a negative impact on our students in current facilities as opposed to knocking down two buildings that are, um, that are they're not harming anybody right now. Um, and so my, my thought was once we gathered all the information that we could regarding um, roofing, um, uh, tracks, parking lots, um, interiors, exteriors of all of our facilities and then showing you that while the money is available, if you so choose as a board to take the $1.2 million and um, raise Sharp and or Newton High School, it can be done. However, it, you risk okay. the current implementation of UPATH in our elementary schools. We will not be able to follow the, the plan that we've presented, um, nor will we be able to do all of the other work that needs to be done that hasn't taken place over the last five or six years. So that's a choice that, that, that you have to make, but that we wanted to put in context. And I really didn't know to be quite honest with you, all of the different things that needed to be done across the system. And the money that you'll generate from the new SPLOST will not be enough to even cover the, the needs that we have now. So the board would have to decide, do you wish to divert the funds that were sitting there that you can very well use to knock down Sharpen Newton High School at the expense of doing the other things that are on the list? And that's, that's the bottom line. 
Um, and, and we recommend that you look at our priorities and divert those funds to take care of our current facilities and to continue the implementation of UPATH in our elementary schools. And so that's why I ask that we hold off so that we could look at the facilities plan and go through the state process and look at entitlement and all the different things that we need to, to know that I really did not know stepping into the position on the first day. So um, that's where we are now. And, and I apologize that it, it, I wasn't as clear um, back then, but that's what I was trying to do to prioritize all of our needs to make sure we put the money and you had the information to make the decision put it in the right place. Madam Superintendent, I appreciate your comments, but I think what my view is that we are putting new verbiage to an old problem that we have, and we're trying to spin our way out of it and to put today's on it. If we had acted in accordance with the plans that we had, we wouldn't be discussing mm -hmm. Sharp would not be next door okay. if we had moved on it like we originally planned. And Again, the money was there. I was led specifically by the other superintendent and the fact that the money was in the kitty. You don't talk money, based on my experience, and say it's there, you can use it what you want to. It was put there for a purpose and we failed to use it as originally described. And that's where we are now. And that's why we have the problem we have now. We didn't use it like we were supposed to. We got the problem and the building is still there and the money is gone. Mr. Johnson, I would like to say that we are putting together a prioritized plan that to, to date did not exist um, that completely outlines all of the um, structural priorities for the school system that uh, once we get it on paper, um, you will have it, but again, it is a prioritized list, so what might be number one on the priority list might suddenly be number three, depending upon what other things have occurred in the school system. So we do our very best to try to prioritize the needs, but if, for example, um, some, something happens at one of the schools and the priority was um, to repair the sidewalk and then suddenly the, the HVAC doesn't work at a school, then we divert the monies there. Um, and so we are doing our level best to be um, transparent with the SPLOS funds by pri providing you with a prioritized budget that will um, spend the monies to, to maintain our current buildings. And in the future, it would be our hope that we could do exactly what you've described. Um, and as we knock them down, um, have, have a plan in place for what to do next beyond just knocking them down and putting, putting a parking lot or grass or whatever. Um, but at this time, the list that we have provided prioritizes based upon our current facility needs and also to continue the view path implementation. But we hear exactly what you're saying. We understand and um, we appreciate your, your concern and feedback and we will do our very best to ensure that we uh, keep you posted, the whole board posted about the, the projects and, um, and the priorities that we have outlined to date. I can't change what, what didn't happen before but I certainly can make, um, make sure whatever we prioritize now gets done. Do I have any more discussion for <clears throat> item E? Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, one opposed. Item F? Item F, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay, can I have a motion for item F? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Ms. Metters, second by, I mean, moved by Ms. Coggins, <laughs> second by Ms. Metters. <laughs> discussion. Okay, no discussion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Item G? Item G, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay, can I have a motion for item G? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Turner, second by Mr. Metters. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, item H? Item H, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay. Do I have a motion for item? Second. Okay. Second. Moved by Ms. Coggins, second by Mr. Turner. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Item I? Item I, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay. Do I have a motion? Submitted. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Metter, second by Ms. Coggins. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Item J. Item J, the superintendent requests that the board approve the personnel recommendations made during executive session. Okay. Do I have a motion for item J? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Turner, second by Mr. Metters. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you, Dr. Lockhart. Thank you. Other matters of interest? 
I think the gentleman has left, but the only thing I wanted Samantha, Mrs. Fury, to maybe expand upon any program that fell under us would be SACS accredited, right? So the, the STEM program will remain SACS accredited. Yes. And you we are working always on appoint it. great leaders. So yes. That would take care of. Yes, it'll all okay. be taken care of. So. Okay. Any other matters of interest? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, just announcing that graduation will take place at Springfield Baptist Church um, Friday night, May the 23rd at 8 p.m. will be Alcovey High School. Um, Saturday, May the 24th at 9 a.m., Newton High School students will graduate, and at 3 p.m., Eastside High School students will graduate. And um, in other news, uh, all students in grades <laughs> pre-K through 11 should report back to school Boom. after <laughs> Memorial Day, May 29th, 30th, uh, or is it the 28th, 29th, and 30th? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. However, <laughs> our seniors, <laughs> is it what? 27, 28, and 29, Tuesday the 27th, Wednesday the 28th, and Thursday the 29th. Um, and our seniors will have completed their year as they walk across the stage on Friday and Saturday. Everybody else coming back. That was back. due to snow and ice. That's due right. to snow and ice and being able to extend the fault. testing times. <laughs> Okay, very good. Any other matters of interest? I just have one, just to clarify. I like to always uh, tell people when they come to our regular session, if we, if we see new faces, we do do work. Um, the regular session uh, is not where we have discussion on the agenda items. Our work session, which is the meeting before this one, is where we have full dialogue. So if you're wondering why they just up there just approving everything, that's because we talked about these all of these items last week. Last week. So I don't want anybody walking away like, well, dang, all they did was approve things. <laughs> so we did talk about these items last week, and if uh, board members had any further discussion, they would have discussed it tonight. But all of these had long um, dialogue. So if you want to hear the dialogue, come to our first meeting of the month. Okay. Any other matters of interest? Um, I'd like to make a motion to go back into um, executive session. Okay. Have a motion on the floor to go back into executive session. Second. Okay. The motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We will return back into executive session to handle an executive session topic. motion to return back into open session so I have a motion to adjourn so second okay moved by Ms. Coggins second by Mr. Turner all in favor aye, aye. any opposed okay thank you